welcome to AI for a Better World. AI in education has come a long way, but has it actually solved remote learning's biggest problems? Think back to the pandemic. Glitchy Zoom calls, distracted students, overwhelmed teachers. Remote learning felt like an experiment, not a revolution. Let's fast forward five years. AI-powered tools claim to have transformed education, but have they, or are we still facing the same challenges? One company tackling this head-on is StudyFetch, an AI native learning platform redefining how students, teachers, and parents experience learning. Here to break it all down for us today is Asan Durrani, CEO and co-founder of StudyFetch. Asan, welcome to AI for a Better World. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. Great. Well, let's dive right in. We all remember the struggles of pandemic remote learning, students zoning out, learning gaps. We've seen the research widened. So if another crisis forced schools online today, what would be different? How would a platform like StudyFetch change the game compared to 2020? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that you also mentioned earlier is how overwhelmed educators and teachers are. And I think how StudyFetch can help that is actually provide a broad set of tools that is based around the professors or educators course materials, then actually have tutoring sessions for um, students available 24 seven. And I think the biggest thing there is that what we've seen is students are actually utilizing StudyFetch on average 20 minutes per session for tutoring sessions. So the impact is there and I think something that's very strong is actually the ability to connect the course materials and study fetch together. So the educators are part of the process as well as the students. That's great. But we know remote learning is only as good as the people using it. Even the best AI tools, they just won't work if teachers and students don't like them and don't know how to integrate them effectively into their other learning programs. What's the biggest challenge you have faced in helping educators and students quickly adapt StudyFetch? It'd be really great if you could give us an example, perhaps, of a school that struggled and sort of talk us through how you were able to resolve their issues and find solutions. Yeah, I, I really do think that onboarding and making sure that institutions and connecting with our students is a real challenge. We've talked to many institutions in the past saying like some of the tools that they've adopted have actually seen like 80% of the educators or students like didn't actually adopt the tools. And how StudyFetch has been a kind of a positive uh, you know, out outcome of that is how we're able to integrate directly into your LMS provider. And we've partnered with Canvas, D12 Blackboard to quite literally press one button and then all of the students' course materials are automatically imported. So I think um, obviously like having a good platform is extremely important, but getting from A to B, getting students to actually utilize it in the first place or educators to understand you know, every single day they're provided a, a different ed tech tool um, on their desk every single day. So making sure that the integration is as easy as possible is something that we've really worked on. I know from my own experience as startups in this space that building an AI powered learning tool is one thing. Scaling it across school districts and school different school uh, curriculums is quite another. Talk a little bit about the biggest challenges that you're facing growing study fetch in schools and please share the lessons you're learning and and any moments where you know you've got the kind of feedback that's made you think we need to pivot if we're going to be able to do this. Give us a little bit of background on what this journey has been like. Yeah, so, you know, me, me and my co-founder, we've known each other. His name's Ryan Shratner. We've known each other since we were in middle, middle school. We had actually uh, worked on an essay writing platform, which went viral all over social media. As we kind of looked into it and really like took a step back and, and thought about, you know, okay, what is actually going to help students, help educators? What is going to scale globally and actually provide an AI, like all-in-one learning platform? We took a step back and actually completely scrapped that idea of, of, of creating an essay writing platform 
and pivoted to study fetch and as we created study fetch we talked to many educators many um, institutions and, and many and did many interviews with students as well to see the gap in ai in education and then we launched officially in september 23 and when we did we scaled to our first million users in our first six to seven months um, I think the, the strongest thing there is we saw a really strong product market fit for educators and students. So now we're just kind of focused on, you know, continuing that scale and providing new and revolutionary study tools like TutorMe, for example, and really just developing those relationships with educators and students. Right. We'll talk a little bit about those those new tools in a minute, but um, I want to focus on perhaps one of the biggest concerns with AI in education, which is misinformation. Uh, you know, those infamous AI hallucinations where the system just makes things up. Now, StudyFetch claims to have an extremely low hallucination rate. That's a bold claim. How do you achieve this level of accuracy? What safeguards have you put in place to make sure that students get that high quality, reliable information? Yeah, I think the biggest thing there and the biggest differentiator for StudyFetch as a product is that the course material is king, right? And what that basically means is that the professors and the educators that are providing the students the course materials is the first thing that goes into StudyFetch, right? So the first thing that students are required to do is upload their materials from their professors, from their uh, you know, educators, and then turn that into study tools based off of the materials. So any response that is coming from the AI is coming directly from those materials and referencing those materials. So it's quite literally directly from the educator. We began today talking about five years ago, the fact that AI in education was barely on the radar uh, during the pandemic. And today it's going everywhere. Where do you see StudyFetch, say three to five years from now? Are there any new exciting features or innovations on the horizon that you can share with us? Perhaps things you're working on now that we won't know about till the future. Yeah, so um, it's honestly super exciting what we're, what we're developing. Where we started off is really focusing on student growth, right? And that's where we started and then slowly switched over to providing study tools for uh, teachers or teacher tools for teachers. And then from there, for these next three to five years, we're trying to bridge that path together, right? And we've provided many uh, tools as well for educators and students to combine that relationship. For example, um, we have a feature called Classrooms where uh, educators can actually create their own AITA based on how they want their behaviors to be based off of the, middle, the modules that they're quite literally creating. And then they can provide that TA to the, to the students. And then once the students receive that, the students then, you know, chat with the TA, uh, ask questions, whatever is needed. And then the professor actually gets direct feedback from the students and gets insights on what students are specific, specifically struggling with, as well as subtopics that the professor might want to teach in class, right? So I think being able to provide a real-time experience for educators and students is something that has never been able to be done before. Another feature that we're actually really excited that we have recently just launched is the ability for students and educators to upload files and then turn it into interactive games. So that's a super cool feature that we're really excited for. And especially from like a educator standpoint, providing an easy way to um, have students really interact with their materials in really fun ways is something that we're really excited to see uh, start growing. We've already had thousands of games already been created in the past few days, which is super exciting. That's wonderful. Are you creating the games yourself or are the students creating the games or is it a combination of both? combination of both. So we provide a template for what the game actually is. Um, and then from there, students can actually tailor the materials towards that game. And then also like skin the game as well. So if they're talking about like, you know, muscle physiology, then, uh, then the game will be skinned towards like that type of theme, which is super cool. Yeah, yeah. very interested in gaming in, uh, in curriculum. We know it's, it's a huge area of growth. Esan, this has been a fascinating conversation. Thanks so much for uh, sharing your insights with us today. Um, we hope you'll come back and join us in the future and tell us more when, as you develop new tools for the platform. Yes, and thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. And to everyone watching, this is just the beginning. Platforms like StudyFetch are transforming learning and we'll be here to bring you the latest breakthroughs. See you the next time on AI for a better world.